due to the rapid rate of infection that we can no longer guarantee the safety of our players to continue to play. And as I said, that's the paramount consideration in all our decision making, is the safety and health of our players. Accordingly, we are suspending the season. We are going to put a time period to the suspension. We are going to look at every available option to us in the next week or so as to how we can recommence the season, be it in other areas, be it in northern Queensland. All the options are still on the table. Um, we thank the players for, for their, all their support to date, and we also thank the fans. This decision hasn't been taken lightly, but we have a world-renowned pandemic expert, and they are very, very concerned at the rapid rate of this infection. And um, as I said, we will and always consider the health of our players before anything else, and we've had no other, no other option but to suspend the season. Todd, would you like to... Thanks, Peter. Um, I'd also echo Peter's remarks, uh, similar that we did this time last week. Uh, we've said from the start of this unfolding pandemic that was the case today could be different tomorrow and what the case was this hour could be different in the next hour. And the advice has changed and as that changes, so do we. Tonight, our situation, as has been said, has changed dramatically. We have made, as Peter has said, the unprecedented decision to suspend the 2020 season. It is indeed a deeply sad day, but one of the most responsible days in our game's history. We would not have reached this point unless the conditions had shifted so dramatically and so exponentially. Today's a difficult day for the rugby league community, both here at head office and across all of our clubs and players. Our priority is to do everything we can to give our game the best chance for a long and sustainable future. We've briefed all of our clubs this evening and all of our players have now been told. For now, we've asked our players not to turn up to training tomorrow while we resolve the situation as best as we can. The self-isolation guidelines we've previously provided will remain in place. There will be a lot of uncertainty amongst our players and we will try to give them as much support as we possibly can. The impact of this decision on those who work within rugby league will be significant. From this afternoon, the NRL's offices are now closed until May the 1st. All staff have been asked to take their annual leave immediately. This was a difficult decision, but an important one to give our business the very best chance of retaining staff long-term and allows us to consider our options to protect the long-term future of the game. While I say it's a tough day for the game, we know it's a tough time for everyone across our community. There's much fear and uncertainty among all of us about what the future holds. As we sit here tonight, no one can confidently predict what is ahead. All we can do as a sport and as a community is remain united and follow the expert advice to keep ourselves and all of our families safe. Can I take the opportunity to thank our fans and our partners for all of their support? These are indeed difficult days and we know not having rugby league as an outlet will become will ensure some people are more isolated and it will disappoint many. But the health of our players and our staff must come first. We look forward to returning the Telstra Premiership as soon as it is safe to do so. We cannot say with any certainty what the future holds, but rugby league community as a whole will continue to work through this as a team. We said this the other day and we'll say it again today. We're in this together and we will make sure we get through this together. Peter and I are happy to take some questions. Peter, the idea to take the entire game to one location, was that on the table today? Look, that was on the table today, but that's had a dramatic turn as well with Queensland closing its borders. It doesn't give us sufficient time to, to do the logistical um, organisation. So and another important reason why we've made the decision today is for the Auckland Warriors. Um, they can return tomorrow. After tomorrow, they possibly couldn't return. We had to make a quick decision. And as I said, because of, you know, our pandemic and biosecurity expert is one of the best in the world, uh, we were alarmed at how it changed in 24 hours you know, yesterday. Uh, all was good, that we can continue to play, and today that took a dramatic turn. So we, we have had two commission meetings today in order to make some very quick decisions because naturally we would like to see the Auckland Warriors return to their families um, whilst we're looking at all the different options. So at this stage, when do you see it returning? 
As I said, we've, we've left it open at, at the moment and we'll probably make some further announcements in the future as to how long we think it'll be. We are looking at all options. All options are still on the table, as I said, from day one. No option is off the table. And, um, but the prime decision making, what's paramount to our decision making is the health of our players and we're not going to take any risk whatsoever. So any options that we look at has to have a uh, guarantee to the health of our players. You've made, it very clear that, you've made it very clear, Peter, that it's a catastrophic situation if you stop playing football. So what is the situation for, for many of your clubs today? It's catastrophic. I, I don't think we've ever, ever come across a financial crisis like this. You know, we're all affected. As Todd pointed out, we've led by example by uh, cutting our expenditure immediately and we, we're hoping the clubs will do the same very quickly. Uh, we will sit down with the players over the next week to look at how they're affected. Uh, this is a financial crisis. You, you can't understate it. It's probably the biggest financial challenge the game will ever face uh, in its history. Uh, but, you know, cooperatively and united, we'll, we will, we will um, uh, deal with it. And, and hopefully we'll come out the other end. If you don't play another game again this season, will the NRL be around next year? Look, rugby league will always survive in some way. I can't guarantee it'll be in the same way it is at the moment. And, you know, no one knows, no one can tell us how long this, this uh, pandemic is going to last. And as I said, in 24 hours, it changed dramatically. So in the next 24 hours, it could even change even further. So we're ready for the worst, and we've got, to, we've got to look at dealing with the worst, and that's exactly what we will be doing in the next couple of weeks. Peter, the next broadcast payment, April 1, is only, only a week away. Have you had any conversation with broadcasters about whether that will be paid, or is that off the table now? Look, we've been, as Todd said, in dialogue with our broadcast partners. They've been great to date. Naturally, they're shattered, just like we are, as to uh, what happened today. Um, we will sit down with them in the next two days and go through all our options. And look, they've been very, very good uh, to this point. And they are looking at options where, you know, the financial impact isn't as bad as what, what we could expect. But until we sit down, it's too premature to say exactly what will happen. So what's the point of no return? How long can you wait before the comp starts? Is, is there a date where you know the, the season's a wipeout? Oh, we've got scenarios that we might not start until much, much later in the season, but we're still very confident of getting a season away. Um, and no one knows what's ahead of us. One thing that we do know in our broader communities, things are likely to get worse before they get better. So I think our communities are in for a very difficult time. Uh, we're talking about rugby league tonight, but there's a much broader issue facing our country. Um, and we need to be aware of that. And we need to take a responsibility, which Peter and I have done today. We've taken a leadership role for our sport. While that's going to be difficult for us financially, there are much bigger issues for our communities to face tonight. Are you still able to pay the players? Absolutely, we still are. But I think this is at a moment in time that the game's cost base will need to be reset. And that cost base is across the entire sport, from players to clubs, central administration. Everyone has a role to play in resetting the cost base. So does that mean players will have to take a pay cut? I think if we're being realistic about what we're facing, the resetting of the cost base is across the whole game, and that includes every single one of them, including myself. Could that mean we have a competition with fewer than 16 teams when we resume? We will do our best to keep all our clubs viable. Um, as I said uh, at our Sunday press conference, we're a family, we're a rugby league family, and when one needs help, we will support them. And we will do everything in our power to ensure that every single one of our clubs remains viable and exists. And, you know, we have some pretty tough decisions to make in the next few weeks, um, but the, the main objective is to keep everyone within our game uh, viable. It's been a hard couple of days for Clubland as well. You know, people, as you say, told to take annual leave or some completely stood down. Look, it's, it's a tough time for all the community, Michelle. It's not just rugby league. There's, you know, there's people throughout the workforce that are being stood down. I don't think Australia's seen a crisis like this. Um, and, you know, the advice today of the pandemic expert is alarming. You know, we didn't take this decision lightly. Uh, their, you know, their, their advice to us is this is going to get a lot worse before it gets better. Today, did you get that advice from the pandemic look, look, as I said, 24 hours ago, when um, the government was talking about all these new measures, we consulted our pandemic and biosecurity expert, and it was fine to continue to play. That changed mid-afternoon today, uh, after we got a call, 
to say that you know we can no longer ensure the safety of our players. And as soon as we got that advice, we called an urgent meeting of the Commission and decided to suspend the season. Our, as I said, the paramount decision making for us is the health of our players. Nothing uh, is considered other than that. Can you see the NRL financially surviving this? Oh, absolutely I can. Um, you know, rugby league's been around since 1908 um, and we've had some real struggles through our sport in history and every time we've bounced back. I can assure you that rugby league will rise again, but through that rise we're going to have some real challenges and the ability for us to stick together through those challenges and face it head on but do it together is the real challenge and we're going to do that in the coming weeks and months. It won't be easy, but we'll come out the other end. So a lot of people have been asking why it's taken so long. Do you stick by the original decision the last couple of weeks? Absolutely. Uh, we have tried to keep our games alive and our industry afloat for as long as we possibly could. We, um, we, we have all, always said we would listen to expert advice. Yeah. Not people's opinions, not uh, hysteria. We would listen to the biosecurity and pandemic expert and the chief medical officers. We have never deviated from that. And today we got advice, unfortunately, that we could not proceed and we immediately took that advice. Peter, in terms of keeping the game alive, to, or keeping the NRL going, do we need government stimulus or funding? Look, look we're, we're, we're in the queue uh, with everyone else. You know, the, Our game is a major economic multiplier through the whole of this state and Queensland. So if you want to stimulate the economy, we have to be considered. I haven't deviated from that and I'll continue to press as hard as I can that we get some uh, amount of money from the stimulus because we are a business. We are a billion dollar business. And as a billion dollar business, you want to stimulate the economy, you've got to look after it because we will pay many, many taxes into the future, just like we have to date. We are a major taxpayer. And if you want to continue to get in the revenues in the future, you make sure you look after that taxpayer right now.